Hey everyone, welcome back to the Modern Indie Artist Podcast, where I talk to independent musicians from all walks of life to explore their journey as an independent musician. All right, man, what's your name? What's the name of your band and where are you from? My name is Alex Cook. I'm a guitar player in Wave Types, and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Where? Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> Dude, I, I love the way you talk, man. It's crazy, and <laughs> you never would know, man. Yeah, but Baltimore. Baltimore. <laughs> Baltimore sounds like uh somewhere in Lord of the Rings. Baltimore. I mean, you say it like that. It definitely don't look like that. I know that much. <laughs> yeah. So wave types, man. Uh, I found your band surprisingly enough. I found your band on Spotify suggested. I can't remember That's what awesome. I was listening to exactly, but I remember like one of your songs just queued up right after, and I fell in love. It was a uh, long gate that came up. The song. the The thing that stuck out to me was your sense of I don't know, melody, dude. Like, it's it's very similar to how I write music, too. But you're very solo-driven. Like, you like to do a lot of soloing and very um, memorable riffs, very memorable solos and things like that. You just let the, the melody carry the song, which is really cool. I like writing like that as well. But, um, like, the end of that song, you had, like, a little so like, a clean break, and all the soloing mm -hmm. on that was, like, very tastefully done and then you broke out into like the most memorable part of that song i think was the very ending of long gate where the solo yeah. takes over dude and that's what made me fall in love with your music dude i appreciate that man i do we wrote that when it was kind of like you know that's kind of like you know sparked the whole thing really it was actually that song later or not just from cheese man years and years <laughs> it's so funny because like the backup plan was always like the instrumental thing mm -hmm. because like i mean you rewind i don't know 10 15 years ago even you know when i got into like guthrie govin and greg howe and a lot of like guitar centric music <clears throat> with no vocals um you know i always played in bands with vocals and the thing was it's like every time like we would start a band up we would play and this and that and like eventually the band would like break up and rob and i would get together and start working on the solo project and we would do that and then like you know somebody would call hey dude you know you're not a band anymore you're trying to play and it's like all right yeah fine whatever and we'll start another band and then you know 10 15 years later finally after like the sixth band broke up we were like all right dude let's work on the solo project and there's like 20 different variants of the solo project keep in mind um but the last band that we played in was more i guess progressive prog kind of thing and i got a lot of influence from playing in that last project and then when we went to go do the solo project it was more it was wave types essentially you know and i wrote long gate and when we wrote that song it was like man like we actually have to do something with this and like we have to you know no more bands like this is it like let's just write and let's make this happen and, and sure enough you know here we are you know it's crazy crazy how it happens so rob you mentioned so rob's been with you in other bands we were probably in like three or four different bands i think we started playing together in 2007 or 2008 um so it's been what 14 15 years now that we've played together i think <clears throat> three bands i think in total that were like actually like somewhat solidified in a sense i mean the earlier stuff i you know i wouldn't even i wouldn't really count that you know yeah. a couple creep covers you know, you know what i'm saying it's a little, <laughs> little whatever but um yeah but yeah we've been playing together for a long time man long time that's cool man that's cool that you have that friend that musician friend that's kind of stuck by your side usually bands have that you know like they'll have like at least two or three musicians that stick together no matter what. He mixes your music too, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, he, he, he does. I mean, for the long, yeah, pretty much from the start of it. Uh, he went to Sheffield Institute and, um, you know, he studied all that. And then all the home studio stuff, like, yeah, man, I mean, he, he's been doing all the mixes and, and yeah, drumming, man, both. You know, he, he's done them both since the start, really, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and we built studio at his place <clears throat> probably six years ago five years ago something something like that but um it's an addition on his house and yeah we went in and built it up and uh yeah man <laughs> it's just been home you know it's been home ever since and, and that's yeah. it's a cold spot you know for sure man he he does a really good job he mixes the drums very well i thought yeah, he's definitely got a year for it man and you know, he, he he's come a long way you know and that's the journey of everybody you know mm -hmm. and, and he enjoys doing it you know it's his life too yeah so what originally started as like a side project solo project actually ended up becoming 
your main band, Wave Types. Absolutely. Yeah, it's crazy, man. What inspired the the band name, Wave Types? Just the nautical thing, man. I, I grew up, my dad and granddad both had boats growing up. So, like, I always spent so much time on the Chesapeake Bay. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just seeing like Anchorage, for instance, like all of the elements to that artwork are pieces of actual things from Maryland that, you know, mean something to me. And the name wave types really just, you know, the waves, ocean, just that kind of like, you know, just looking out, you know, I just picture myself just looking at the water like I normally do. And then, yeah, I guess putting the word types, it just makes you think, you know, (laughs) whether it's a heavy storm, whether it's just that (laughs) little trickle, you know, just something that makes you think. I think the music definitely fits the, the band name for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely does, man. It, it's it's probably the first time that ever has happened in my life. It sets you on a journey, dude. It really does. When you listen to your music, like if you just sit there and listen, like to, to the craftsmanship of your work, it's it takes you on a journey, man. And and that's yeah, that's the thing. Like you know, it's funny because we never actually printed any, you know, physical copies of anything yet. But I did have liner notes written for Anchorage. And it was something actually really simple. And, and, and all it stated was um, <clears throat> that, like, this record is the canvas and you get to paint the picture. Mm-hmm. And basically, you know, kind of the, the beauty with instrumental music is, is, you know, you can relate whatever you want to it. You know, there's there's no vocals. There's no, you know, if you're having a bad day, you know, you may relate that song to that bad day. And somebody else may be doing something completely different with it. You know, it may be the best day of their life. And, and that is, you know, it's open for interpretation. And, and it's something that's just, you know, it's a beautiful thing, man. And it, and it means, you know, every song has a lot of meaning to me. They all do. In different <clears throat> points in my life, different stories, different, you know, they, they all have meaning behind it. Everything I do for that matter, there's always some cryptic, you know, something in there. Yeah. Um, like I was saying, artwork, you know. But, um, yeah, it's just, that's just my goal, man. It, just to be able to play and, and convey as much emotion as I possibly can through music and let you guys, you know, just interpret how you wish, man. That's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear you say that, you know, like the, the amount of emotion you put into the music, because that's what it's about, especially with instrumental music. You know, it, it, you let the emotion carry the music like a lot of bands with, you know, vocalists, the vocalists will carry the, with the lyrics and the melodies of, you know, the vocal melodies and whatnot. But with instrumental music, the the instruments carry the, the vibe and the feeling and, and all the motion and all that. And I think you guys execute that perfectly, dude, with wave types. Appreciate that. And dude, Long Gate actually is your top song. It's got like a, like 30,000 plays on Spotify or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that one and I guess Whitewash and, and Longgate were like kind of like going back and forth for the longest time. And I think mm-hmm. Longgate's kind of a little bit, but yeah, it's sweet, man. It's crazy. It's like, dude, I mean, you know, for the longest time, like, oh, I've been doing this for a long time, man. I mean, you know, uh, I've played a lot of shows in a lot of places and with a, not a lot of people there. And it's just crazy to me that like, there's actually like fans like it's, it's real people like you know and, and, and like to me it's, it's just the hardest thing to grasp man it, it, it's it's the greatest feeling in the world you know like actually having an audience mm-hmm. it, to me that's like i mean it could all end the day dude i'm good like that that to me is like you know that's the goal that i was able to accomplish you know and, and it's not like the biggest legacy ever but there's like there's something there that's truly special and i mean for everybody that is taking the time to, to reach out and to listen and, and you know the dms the messages the comments man i, I mean ugh, dude <laughs> but it made me cry man i mean it's it, it truly is just the greatest feeling in the world to me man and i'll I'd, i'll never be able to put it in words of how much it actually means to me but it is truly special it really is dude that's so good to hear you say all that man like for that's what it's about for real like when you get down to the nitty and gritty that's what it's about mm-hmm. you know you, you without your fans or your supporters that that is the lifeblood of your music if you have if you don't have that you you don't have anything you know so the fact that you can sit there and appreciate it on that level is is a big deal and that definitely makes me respect you a lot more you know n- not that I didn't respect you enough before but like here <laughs> no, no, hearing that dude yeah. makes makes me you know i don't know makes me happy dude yeah, and I can totally relate to that as well, you know, like I've been doing this a long time as well, you know, since I was uh, about 18 or 19 years old, like do like pursuing it as a career. I've been playing since I was 10, but pursuing it since I was about 18 or 19 and just to have as much of 
the success that I've had has been, you know, mind blowing. And still to this day, like, it's crazy, dude. So yeah, um, I love your music, dude. So whenever like I reached out to you and became friends with you and, and started kind of, you know, entertaining the idea of us like collaborating or something like I for real, dude, I'm so stoked about that. Like we still need to do dude, that. Dude. Yeah, we definitely do, man. I and mean, like together, like doing an EP and, and, and just knocking out, man, it would be because like, yeah, when you reached out to me, I was like, dude, holy shit. Um, and then, yeah, dude, like when we were collabing like a year ago just trying to get in some you know some ideas and stuff together it, it, it's like dude this thing is too perfect like mm -hmm. you and i really gel dude like we we really click you know and, and yeah, yeah we definitely be able to put out something special man for sure for sure i agree that that track you sent me recently like i'm still i'm down i'm on that like we're gonna we're gonna knock that out but like you mentioned, you know, we gel, we do, man. Like you write, like the way you write, like you write in a certain key and you use that key a lot, but you use it in different ways. And I think that's really cool. If, if anybody's listening or, or watching, go check out Alex's Instagram. Almost every, every day or every other day you post something and uh, a lot of the riffs you post, they're like almost within the same key, but they're like different riffs. And I just think it's so cool how you can create so much out of that key. And that's the key, one of the keys that I love to play in. I love writing songs in that key. So uh, how do you do that, man? How do you sit there and you just like you riff within the same key and you just keep creating? <laughs> it's, it's, it's wild, man. And, and it happens from a couple different ways. So, like, I'll have, like, a riff or, like, some kind of skeleton or something, the bones, and, and I'll sit there and kind of, like, mess with it, tweak with, you know, kind of try to figure it out in a sense. And, like, I'll discover, like, three or four different variants that I really like, and I can't pick. <laughs> so, like, I'll end up having, like, you know, this one. And, 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 and a lot of times like with the Instagram thing, like, you know, low key, um, I'll post something just to gauge what the engagement is on that riff and if it's like going buck wild then i'm like all right cool i'll use that in a song or like you know it's like kind of mm -hmm. like the fan kind of picking the next record without even knowing because i'm just like cherry picking some of the stuff that like they really really like so it kind of like works out in a sense um and then if i post something it's like a dud i'm like yeah well okay you know <laughs> you don't have to tell me like <laughs> i'll do something else but yeah. but yeah man I mean, you know you, it's crazy how like one chord will change everything you, you like you stumble on a chord it's like oh my god and then like next thing you know man down the rabbit hole and like you just kind of you're hitting it in different ways and this and that and that and this and like before you know it you may write three or four riffs in that same key and, and, and as well like using that same chord and like you know it's just it's that creativity man all it takes is just like one little thing for me and, and i can just dive into it or like right now unfortunately the writer's block's kind of kicking in where it's kind of yeah. the opposite where you can't like nothing sounds good man i'm like geez yeah that's actually something i wanted to ask you was like how do you deal with writer's block because everyone deals with it differently yeah it, it how i deal with it um a couple different ways. I mean, obviously, anybody knows me. I mean, I'm always outdoors. I'm, I'm always walking the water somewhere, fishing, that kind of stuff. Like, that actually helps a lot. Where it's like this, this comfort. I don't know. Like, you, you're searching for this, like, it's almost like a natural high kind of feeling, man. Just like, like, you're just able to, like, let things go. And sometimes, man, like, as crazy as it sounds, like, a riff will just kind of come into my head or some kind of, like, drum beat or something. It's like, uh-oh. And, like, I can pick up my phone and start humming into it, you know, that kind of thing. And then, like, go home and try to, like, create that. And that's one way that I deal with writer's block. Um, another way is, I mean, <laughs> well, the old way, I'm, I'm getting better at this, was buying guitars. Uh, <laughs> go to <laughs> buy another guitar and then, like, okay, this thing's dead. You know, because instruments do inspire. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I mean, sometimes you pick up a guitar and it's like, oh, my God. And, like, riffs are just pouring out of this thing and you know, so that that definitely helps. Like changing guitars or different tunings, seven strings, that kind of thing. I'm, I'm I haven't really played an eight string, but I, if writer's block persists for another two months, I'll probably buy one. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, alternate tunings definitely helps. Trying to stumble on something that triggers, you know, uh, the creativity. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely another way. Um, different tunings for sure. Um, different tones too, man. I mean different delays, different, you know, there, there, there's all types of ways to, to get out of it. Um, and it's fortunate enough to be able to work with Rob because like sometimes like, you know, he has really good perspective on things too, where, Hey, I got this idea and like, you know, we can kind of build off that. And it may be something that would, 
that I'm not thinking of. Because I think a lot of the times what you do when you're in writer's block is you go to that comfort zone, and sometimes it's the last thing you need to do. Sometimes you need to just do something completely different. And because you, you know, you're you. It's always going to be you, you know? So even if you're doing something a little bit different, like, the you's still going to be in it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, don't shy away from that, man. Like, drop the damn thing down to drop C if you have to, man. Go to an open tuning. Like, that, there's a song that I was working on, and I actually tuned the high E. It was the B string and the E string identical. So it was kind of like dad gad, but, like, it was in drop C, but nonetheless, the top two strings were drop C. It's the same note. But it added, like, this crazy chorus effect. And, like, it was so cool, man. And then it actually sparked the song, and it was, like, sick experiment have fun with it that's really cool you said that because something that i've done to to kind of remedy writer's block is exactly what you said i change tunings like my whole career as a musician i've been playing and drop tunings you know but i've never really experimented with weird tunings although i know i could have i just didn't the beginning of this year when i started writing singles every month the first single i wrote was um enough that's that's the name of the song and they rips by the way i love it I love it. So thank you, man. Thank you. Um, so, but when I wrote it, I was like, okay, I'm going to go into this fresh. So I tuned my guitar to standard, like just regular standard tuning. And I was like, let's see if we can make something with a standard tuning. So I started fiddling around on just regular standard tuning. So you can play chords like regular, like traditional chords uh, instead of like the, the, the power chords that I'm used to. And then I was like, okay, this is cool, but let me go down just a notch so what i did was i tuned half a step down from standard so it's still in standard tuning so and one of my favorite bands does this um hopes fall and that's what started uh enough uh like like the inspiration for it and then i started fiddling with a new technique like called a uh, hybrid picking uh where you're picking with like your finger and your pick the first riff of the song is a hybrid picking riff like and that's what birthed the entire song like the whole song is based off of that hybrid picking thing like i literally took the notes from the hybrid picking riff and built the entire song from it yeah, that's sweet man yeah exactly like stuff like that that yeah man just branch off you know because mm -hmm. pick up the guitar and your default is go back to that same that comfort zone man you, you gotta break out of that and and a lot of times when you do like you pick up a couple new tricks along the way, man, to throw in your bag. And that, that's like the cool thing about it, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've done that. I've done that a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> and it pays off a lot. Oh, yeah. It's give, it's given me new life, dude, I feel like. I was in a big writer's block because I was like, what do I write about now? You know, like I've been writing in these drop C, drop B, drop A, you know, A sharp, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, what can I do next? So I was just like, all right, let's go back to the basics. Let me go back to standard tuning. And then that's when, like, new doors or doors that were already there, I just kind of cracked them open a little more. I was like, all right, let's let's explore this. So now every single that we've written this year is half step down standard tuning. That's yeah. so sick. That's cool, man. So you mentioned like your inspirations, like as far as guitar players. You said Guthrie Govan. Like, what are your inspirations as far as like guitarists or bands or music or anything like that? Man, it it started well, definitely like the Seattle like grunge is like kind of what got me in the music in the first place, man. I mean, I referenced Alice in Chains, but definitely, you know, Alice, Soundgarden, Nirvana, you know, but a lot of the nineties alternative stuff too, man. I mean, for the longest time, I guess like if you, to put it in perspective, so the band before wave types, clear the coast was formed in 2016. And that was like melodic hardcore. So before that, I've never played it. Never, never done it once. So you're talking the majority of my life was playing like Deftones kind of like, you know, it was always hard rock. Um, I feel like a lot of my style, like I listen to a lot of stuff with like guitar solos and all that kind of stuff. Candlebox, anybody familiar with Candlebox, listen to their first record, the guitarist, you know, all the lead work in that record, man, like definitely influenced me heavily. Um, but yes, so I always had this like different approach to like soloing, I guess, if you will, the lead work. And when we started Clear the Coast, like I had like that 80s-esque kind of soul vibe guitar playing thing. And it melded with my buddy who played melodic hardcore. And it sounded so sick, man. I was like, well, I do like, you know, a lot of these like little layers and this kind of stuff. And like when we started like putting that together, it was incredible. And I, honestly, I really wish we released that EP because it, it, it rips. And actually, believe it or not, the song that I sent you, that seven string song, <clears throat> was originally a Clear the Coast song. Um, 
that I reworked and, you know, it's actually kind of an older song. My influence comes from a lot of different places, man. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of 90s, even a lot of 80s music, alternative, a lot of stuff that you wouldn't even think. And then it just kind of, my journey as a musician led itself into, you know, the prog stuff, you know. I, I listen to a lot of, like, you know, Gamelon and stuff like that, man. A lot of pretty crazy stuff. Um, but nonetheless, a bunch of bunch of tricks i picked up from so many different guitarists over the years and it kind of just melded into what it is today you know mm -hmm. yeah for sure like that, that's what it is for me too like I, I get inspiration from literally anything and everything like it doesn't have to be metal music like i could be listening to like a Katy perry song or you know sure. something chill you know like i actually I, I grew up listening to like punk music pop music punk music you said nirvana yeah nirvana was was one of the ones i was into growing up as well but yeah, man, it's just a, a big melting pot of, of inspiration now. And and now inspiration comes from like going off on a walk or, or like nature, you know, something like, like it doesn't have to pertain to music. Like for me, I'll go off and I'll take a drive. Like I love to just drive the car in silence too, not even listening to music. I'll just be driving in silence and it just gives my head some space to just think and mull things over. And then also fishing, you know, me and you have that in common. We both love to fish. So fishing definitely gives me some inspiration when I'm out in nature. For sure, man. Yeah, it, it, that, that's been like the biggest thing over the last couple of years for me is, is definitely that and as well just listening to a lot of music as well you know just just spotify whatever pops on just listen to it man you know a lot of times i'm putting in i'll put in a band to start and just let it roll mm -hmm. and, and you never know what you're gonna find you know well technically we wouldn't be here right now right yeah. you know <laughs> and that's partly like, cool. because like when that happens to me i used to be like i don't know i used to suck at that like whenever something would come on and and i didn't know who it was i would immediately change it you know but nowadays like as I get older and wiser, I'm like, you know what? Let's just check out whatever this is. Like, even if like the first 30 seconds of it sucks, let's, let's just hear it out. And I do that a lot now. I'll just let the Spotify play. But in your case, when your song popped up, I was like, from the get go, I was like, wait, what is this? And then I'm just jamming. And then the whole way through, I'm on a journey. And then here we are. Yeah, I guess, you know, it's actually a funny point. I forgot to mention, uh, well, not really funny, but if you listen to my music, like the structure of it is, is so vanilla, man. A lot of the times, like it, it is really just verse, chorus, bridge, you know, and I, I may throw something at the end, whatever. And, and a lot of that really does come from my upbringing. You know, everything I listened to is growing up was, was like that, man. You know, you got a verse, you hit them with the chorus and, and then you, you go back to like, you know, and, and I've ventured off a little bit, you know, I, I've done, you know, I made there's some little part in there. It's like, oh, you know, I'm trying here. Um, but, you know, <laughs> you know, the, the structure of my music isn't I try not to overcomplicate it. I really just try to like, you know, a catchy riff, a hook, and, and then I can just kind of flex on the, the lead work kind of thing. You know, I, I get the improv a lot. You know, a lot of it's written just improv, you know, and, and it's kind of a double-edged sword because i got to relearn it but you know at the same time like it's where my comfort zone is it, it's when it, you know i got some kind of backing track and i can sit there and, and just let it go and and what happens is what happens and sometimes it takes a little bit you know it's not like every time's a one take beautiful thing there's a lot of mistakes in the midst of it but you know it, for me that is like i strive in that like that that to me is like my favorite writing is is when i got the song built and it's time to do the leads and rob will just sit there give me you know the verse and, and just loop it you know he'll, he'll lead a room <laughs> or he'll sit there and like yo stop like that what you just did like do that again and then like you know that's kind of how we end up writing you know um and, and it's funny because like my home setup it's an amp and it's a, a ditto pedal and, and that's it man <laughs> i literally just have something to loop a riff to write to that riff and then you know that's all i do man I, I try to keep things so streamlined and simple that's cool man i'm obviously not good with technology either i mean that's no secret man you do pretty well man and and i think your your process is your process i mean it's not going to work for everyone it's going to work for you though and you found that and that's that's gold right there dude the fact that you found what works for you what you're comfortable in keep doing it i mean obviously yeah i introduce some new stuff whenever you're comfortable with it but 
you know, like your verse course, verse course thing or whatever. My upbringing, like it was verse course, verse course, but then I ventured off when I discovered metal and technical metal and I kind of just mimicked that for a while. And now my, now my style is all crazy. Like I don't stick to the verse course, verse course. Although lately I've kind of changed up the way I write now where I'm trying to write more structured, more verse course, but I still sprinkle in my crazy style that I'm known for or whatever. You know, it's, I, I like that. You know, I think that's cool. It, it gives the listener a, a sense of, I guess, adventure. You know, when you're listening to the music, like you want to be able to feel immersed in it. You can't do that when everything's all over the place. Yeah, yeah it does get pretty complicated. And, and, and I like to like, I'll dress things differently. I, I'll, I'll have a verse chorus, but like when I go back to the verse, like the lead work and stuff will be different and there'll be like a, a different layer or theme will come over top. And it, and it's always like building, like it's it never quite 100% the same. Um, although in the last EP, I think there are a few songs I may have, done some things that were a little bit out of the ordinary and it, it, it really just depends on the song i guess it's song dependent for me too because it's like sometimes it just feels like it needs to just go to something different when it we get that feeling like i don't force it you know if that's like what it is and like you know and if i can't write anything to it then usually i just put the song on the back burner and we'll get to it when we get to it because you know we just hear that it needs to go somewhere else and we don't have that particular part right now so and, it, and it, there's there's a graveyard full of songs that I wish were done right now, dude. I, I really do, man. There's two or three that should have been on Anchorage that hopefully will be out at some point. You know how it goes, man. You just, you know, some things you just can't quite get it. And then one day you'll pick up the guitar and, like, write something. And then it goes right to, like, that. It's like, dude, I found it, you know. Four years later, boom, got it. Yeah, dude, I think I think every artist deals with that, like the whole riff graveyard thing where you write a riff and then it doesn't necessarily work in that moment. And then you come back to it later in a different setting, you're writing and all of a sudden you write something and it's like, oh, that'll go to the, the riff that's been chilling for forever. You know, like, dude, I think every artist has that. Yeah, yeah, and, and and for any new artist or just any guitar player that deals with it, man, just don't force it, man. That's my best advice. You just don't don't force it. All because you feel like it needs to be done now. I mean, it doesn't, man. It doesn't. Don't don't rush the creative process, man. Just let it be. You'll know when you get it. You know, you'll know. You'll because you'll be smiling, man. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> you know, if you're not yeah. smiling, put it away. When you're smiling, you're good. Dude, that's solid advice, dude. For real, like <laughs> that's what it's about. So, any of the other bands that you were in, you guys were just local bands. You you've never been on like a label or anything like that, have you? No, no, no labels. Just yeah, just local. So, I mean, some shows are better than others. We played with, you know, like some national acts at times, but nothing like maybe five hundred people is probably the biggest show. You know, nothing too crazy. Um, you know, I want to get back to playing live, like. I can't even express how bad. Um, <laughs> more than ever, and, I, and and Rob does too. As I sit here today, it's going to be different a year from now, two years from now. You know, I, I'm going to look back and be like, man, you know, hopefully I'm on stage and and, and I'm playing and, and if lucky enough to do some touring, that'd be sweet. You know, it's kind of like a weird spot I'm in right now. Like there's something there, but how do I get to the next point? You know, what, what do I do? You know, and, and and the only thing I could do is what I do. Yeah, because I don't know what else to do. So, is the goal like, do you guys want to be signed, or do you guys just want to like be independent and then try to tour, being independent and stuff like that? Because a lot of bands are doing that nowadays, where they're just completely independent, but they're still touring. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it would probably make the most sense to just be independent and still do touring. Um, you know, but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends on what a label would say. I guess I would like to know what a label would say, but then again, you know. I'd have to go uh, be prepared. Like I wouldn't just flip out and put my some ink on some paper and say, "Hey, man, let's go." Like <laughs> I have to talk through with like a lawyer. Like I got, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's kind of like intimidating process because you just don't know, man. You know. But at the same time, I guess the dream would be, yeah. I mean, go indie and, and, and just keep doing what we're doing, keep building it. You know, keep networking and, and hopefully, yeah, man, be able to play some shows and, and actually see some of these fans in person, man. Like, just keep writing records, you know. The biggest thing with Rob and I is just that flow, dude. It's just like, you know, Sundays, man. Like every Sunday for 14 years, like we see each other, you know. It's just what it is. And there's some Sundays, obviously, we got stuff going on. But for the most part, man, like there's not a month that goes by that we don't hang out and like work on something music related for 14 years. We want to see where we could take it. You know, we definitely do. Dude, I, I think you guys have the potential to, to go somewhere with it. You guys are already doing it. I mean, like you have a following on social media. 
and, and I've watched you grow, dude. I remember you had like about 2,000 followers on Instagram or something like that. And then now, I, I don't know where you're at now. Are you like 10K? Yeah, probably over 10, 12 or something like that. Yeah, dude, just, and that's just from you posting every day and, like, your music, your riffs, and, I mean, the more people see that, the more you grow your own, you know, brand or whatever, people are going to check out your band, and your band's going to grow. So I think you guys are doing the right thing right now. It's just a matter of when you guys can get a full band set up and start playing the live shows, and then you can take it to the next level. Exactly, and, and that's probably, you know, after this next DP, yeah, I, I want to sit down and actually start to, like, get a bass player, get somebody else that could play guitar and, and sit down and, and actually put this thing together and, and, and go give it a shot, man. I mean, it's it's something that we're just itching to do, man. Like, there's this passion for this, man. Like, you know, I've always wanted to do this. Like, it was always my backup plan. In other words, it was always a dream of mine to put something like this together and to not be able to play and showcase that, like, you know, it sucks, man. It does. Like, I, I want to get out and, like, play these songs live, man. I, like, this is, like, the first time I ever get to play something in front of somebody and they already know what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, as opposed to, like, local fans, like, everybody, hey, I'm going to go get a beer at the bar. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad, what's up, man? You know, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, I thought they were good, you know. And then at the end of the night, you go home and, you know, hopefully you got 20 bucks or whatever. And, and, and yeah, you know, damn, we were so good tonight, man. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you, yeah. you nailed every local band just now. <laughs> that's, that's how it is, man. I, you know, <laughs> we've all been there. <laughs> we've all been there. It's not that anymore, you know? That's all I know. Like, like, all I know is the local band thing. I don't know what it's like to actually play in front of somebody. It's like they actually know the song when they're walking through the door. Like, they, they're there to hear that song. Like, you know, I don't know what that feels like, man. Dude. You know, and, and that's, I probably need that. Yeah, you do, need. man. It's, it's a different level of appreciation and satisfaction that you get from music it's it's inexplainable you can't you you definitely need to experience that man as especially as a musician you know with the amount of talent you have and everything man like you you need to go out there and do this and find a way to make it happen uh, i know we all got lives and stuff you got a regular job you know that's life but that shouldn't stop you from doing what you love at all Definitely not, man. I mean, you know, yeah, that itch, man. When you're a kid, you want that. You know, I've wanted that since I was a kid, man. Like, it's that's all I ever wanted was like to do this, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and it'll never go away. It'll never go away. At this point in my life, man, you know, I gotta, I gotta get on this thing, dude. I gotta get on it. You know, I gotta get on it now, like today, yesterday. Like, I gotta get on it. I, th I think you will, man. It seems like you got enough drive and passion, dedication to make it happen. Uh, another reason why I do the podcast is because, like, being an older musician, you know, it's not just about for the love of it because yes obviously we love playing music but it's about the business too and a lot of musicians lack the business sense to take it to the next level you know and and with more bands uh going the diy route without a label and stuff you need those business smarts you're going to need to know how to market promote your stuff on your own and everything man there's just so much to it now in this new age of live music and, and just releasing your own music there's a lot of resources out there. You can learn stuff for free, you know, and there's this new thing that bands are doing where instead of the old model where they would release, you know, like one single or two singles and then they would release the whole album all at once. Well, now bands are doing this thing where they call it the waterfall release plan where and that's what we're doing now, too, where you'll release your album, but in singles. And then when the album finally comes out, you'll have like two songs on it that no one's ever heard. So it's like flip-flopped, you know, like instead of releasing the whole album all at once, you just release all the, as singles. And then the very last release, which is the whole thing, will have the two extra tracks. And then there's uh, multiple things that go along with that as far as like how you would release it. Uh, if you were releasing through your distributor like DistroKid, like say you're doing a single a month like we are, you would do your first month, you release one single. And then the second month, you would release two songs at one time. But you would take the ISRC code from the song that you released on DistroKid and you would tack it on to the second release as a two song EP or whatever. And what that'll do <coughs> is that'll stack your metadata, like all of your plays and all of that stuff from Spotify it'll stack it for the second release. So you're basically re-releasing the, the first track that you released in January, or, you know, the first track, if you were starting in January or whatever. So then on the second release, you'll have two songs, which one was already previously released, and it'll have a bunch of plays on it already. On the third month, when you release the third single, you release the new one, 
and then you release the two previous ones with it, with the ISRC codes. And then that'll stack as well. So then you'll have the previous plays from the past three months, and then you'll have new plays because when people check out this new third song, they're also going to check out these other two because they're going to be like, oh, this is part of some EP, whatever. But really, eventually go into a final release. It sounds really complicated, but it it really is pretty simple. <laughs> no, no, it is. It's, it's actually really smart, too. I mean, releasing in that fashion anyway because it's, it's just constant momentum, you know, mm-hmm. and it's supposed to just dump all at once. Like, you know, they hear a single, they get hooked on that, and a lot of times you give them like you know, six, seven songs, they're not going to make their way through it all right off the bat. You know, it, it, it takes a little bit, but that way it's kind of like, you know, here you go. And then you keep that going, you know, it's constant, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're just stacking plays by re-releasing it. I think oh, there's going to be a lot of people that hate that because, you know, they're, they're so conditioned and, and used to, you know, oh, I want a whole album all at once. You know, there's so many people out there that still want albums, but you are giving them an album. They're just, they're receiving it in increments until the, the final release. Least, but you know, for those impatient people, you just won't ever please them because they want all of it all at once. Yeah, not everybody's gonna be happy, unfortunately, man. Yeah, but but I'm sorry, I went on some big rant about that. I was just saying, you know, like there's there's a lot of business stuff that independent musicians can learn about how to go about being an independent musician nowadays. The information's out there, and you can literally grow an internet band into being a live band very easily now with the power of the internet. <laughs> Yeah, it's something else, and it, man, it's crazy. It really is. So the end goal with your band, Wave Types, is continuing DIY and possibly forming a band and playing live shows. Mm-hmm. So if you guys ever get to the point where you guys are doing this and you get approached by a label, would you guys consider, you know, hopping on a label at that point, or would you want to continue to just DIY? I mean, it. it it, it's a complicated thing. It, it, I guess like with the label, I mean, you know, you get the promotion, you, you, you get the, you get all that, you know, you, you get the know-how like just by just sitting there, you know, they get to handle all that kind of stuff, which, you know, definitely has some benefit to it. Now on the flip side of that, clearly a lot of your profits are going to be going to a label as opposed to your own pocket. It's so tough because, you know, at this stage of my life, I have a good job. Fortunately, you know, I would leave it right now <laughs> if it meant being able to play on the road every day but at the same time like you get used to a certain lifestyle you get used to making a certain income you know so which you know like if going with the label is it possible to to be able to make a livable income or like you know what i'm saying like there's a lot of the i hate to say it but like i guess it would come down to lifestyle things and how that would you know because you know rob's got a kid like you know things change in life man you know I wouldn't say no to a label. I definitely wouldn't say no, but at the same time, I'd be hesitant just because of what obligations would that bring? Like, what would I have to do? Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe what I have to do is something I could do, you know? And, and that maybe it is a good idea. Maybe it is a good option, but it's tough, man. It's tough. You know, there, there's always that open door. I would never say no. What would it bring? It's just, I don't know, man. I really, you know, it's, it's a tough question because I just don't know exactly what would be expected if a labor order approached me. I think you'd be smart about it. Like use, you know, your street smarts and, and, and use negotiation power, you know, if they do come to you first, because there's certainly there's bands out there shopping for labels, sending emails and press kits out, whatever. But if a label approaches you, you definitely have negotiation power because they want oh. you. So you can literally weigh out the situation and be like, well, hey, what can you do for me? Because I'm already sitting pretty good here independent. It'd have to be a fair deal. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's really what it would come down to because, yeah, you know, at the same time, working does limit, you know, the amount of time and effort you can put into things because you got to go to work. So mm-hmm. I can't spend that little time with the, a guitar in my hand. <laughs> um, it really would depend, man. It really would depend if a label were to approach and, 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 and see what they had to say and see how that would fit with us, you know, and if it's something that would work. You know, probably. Mm. And if it doesn't, hey, man, you know, still be friends, but we'll just go ahead and keep doing our thing, you know? Yeah. So um, you're with Legator. Is that how you say it? Legator Guitars? How did you uh, how did you get on with Legator? Uh, they actually they approached me uh, probably a year and a half ago when I was I was actually with LSL at the time. Um, yeah, they, they approached me about, you know, hopping on with Legator and at the time, you know, still with LSL and I, I was familiar with their guitars, but I wasn't like, I hadn't played one yet. 
And, you know, I told him I was interested. You know, I get back to him. Um, you know, we asked, asked a couple questions, talk back and forth for a little bit. And then, you know, fast forward, it's probably like six months, seven months later, I was at Guitar Center with uh, Rob. He's picking up some sticks. And lo and behold, there was a legator sitting right there on the stand. Some guy was like, he wanted to buy something and he got that. And then he wanted something else. He wanted a six string instead of seven string, you know, because Guitar Center typically doesn't have certain things in the store. Um, but there was one there. So <clears throat> I picked it up and I was like, damn, you know, that thing's pretty sweet, man. Lightweight, you know, felt nice. Uh, neck joint was solid, you know, fret work was on point. I was like, dude, this thing's actually pretty sweet. You know, a lot of people that know me, my guitar collection is pretty elaborate you know i have a lot of expensive instruments i do but at the same time like i was looking for a company that had a lot of production guitars so you know it's like you're playing three thousand dollar guitars like i'm not getting five three thousand dollar guitars sent to my doorstep you know? yeah. who am i <laughs> you know <laughs> so, yeah. let's be real here i was looking for something that you know a production guitar that had what i needed man jumbo frets first and foremost solid qc something with uh some you know, seven strings, eight strings, that kind of deal, multi-scale, you know, uh, instruments for detune stuff that I like to do in the studio. And they had literally all of that. So, and I stumbled on one out in the wild, you know, I reached back out to him and I said, Hey dude, man, you know, I was at guitar center and I played one and this thing's actually really sweet. I'm still interested. And so we talked back and forth and, uh, yeah, man, they were like, yeah, we'll send you one, you know, which one you want. And it was, uh, pick that ghost, the purple headless ghost model. And, um, yeah, they sent it to me and I got it. And I was like, dude, holy shit. Like this thing is sweet. And, uh, yeah, man, I signed on with them, in, I guess, May or June of last year. And yeah, man, I I've been happy ever since, man. I mean, they've treated me great. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I love that ghost, dude. When, when you first busted that out on Instagram, I was like, this guitar is going to get a lot of views because it's really pleasing to the eye. Like the way the guitar looks, is just beautiful. And yeah. then you playing what your, you know, your music on it was just even better. I don't know, man. It made me a fan. Like, I've never played a, a, a Legator guitar, but just watching you play one and then seeing that ghost model, like, like those guitars are sick. They look sick. And the way you're describing it seems like they're they're great guitars. Dude, they, yeah, they definitely are, man. I, I was shocked. And I know from, like, you know, years and years, I mean, I, I trust me. I followed all the guitar forms. I, I knew what people had to say about them for the longest time. From apparently what I was reading, you know, they turned a lot of things around in the last several years with their QC and this and that and that and this. And dude, sure enough, man, checks out, you know, definitely checks out. Cause I, I'm a stickler for some things on guitars for sure, man. I mean, and they checked every box that I need to check personally, especially mm -hmm. the neck profile too. Having that C profile, gotta have that. <laughs> it's gotta have that in jumbo frets, man. I have to. At this stage of the game, I can't play without it, man. It's something about those glassy frets, man. I love that. Your stuff's really, really solid, man. Really solid. That's cool. That's good to hear, man. I'd love to be able to play one of those uh, ghost models. Dude, those those guitars look super sick. Yeah, man. I got the crazy ones coming out now with the Pale Moon Ebony fretboards and all the them things are crazy looking. Man. <laughs> I got to grab one of them. I at least try to play one at some point in time. But Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's cool, man. So you said that he reached out to you. Did he reach out to you because he found you on social media or what? Well, actually, no. Oddly enough, um, it was Wave Types. He was a fan of the music. Ah. That was like the first thing he said. It's like, hey, dude, I'm a fan of Wave Types and this and that. And, you know, and that's how he figured out about me. Being a fan of my music definitely something that made me feel comfortable. That's awesome, dude. Like, what a feeling that is when a company's just like, hey, your music is sick. Like, that. that's what your music got you, man. You, a guitar endorsement. Like, that's it insane. It is, dude. It really is. It's wild. So, are there any other companies that you endorse, or is it just Luggator? Like yes. Uh, Guitar Marie Pickups. I've been playing their uh, pickups exclusively for probably six, seven months as well. Uh, we actually have something really cool in the works with them. Um, it's going to be a pickup. And then uh, uh, Diodario. Goodness gracious. Um, Dude, that's Diodario awesome. String. Yeah, yeah, that, that was like, yeah, that was pretty surreal too, man. It's like, that's my string of choice. Those are top yeah. notch. Dude, I've tried everything else out there and nothing just, nothing's better than Diodario. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Dude, that's funny. You say Guitar Marie pickups. I actually hit that company up and they emailed me back and said they weren't interested. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, if I wasn't using my phone, I'll make a phone call real quick. No, but I am very interested in like guitar guitars. Cause I, over the years, I've seen a lot of the stuff that they've been putting out and I have a, a couple of friends that are endorsed by them. And, uh, and then you as well, you're endorsed by them. So, I mean, it seems like a great guitar company to be a part of. Dude, yeah. I mean, definitely, man. I mean, it, it, like the communication back and forth is super solid. Their product. 
solid, you know, and, and they just share, you know, a lot of my content, which is really sweet. And, and it's something that like they just do on their own. You know, it's not like, hey, man, you know, can you share? It's just like, I'll just like hop on Instagram. And it's like, there I am on like Legator's page. I'm like, dude, it's crazy. They're like Facebook. And I'm like, dude, they're like, you know, like they, they really actually take care of me, which is something that's like, it's sweet. You know, like it, that alone, like that connection, like it, it means a lot to me. Sure, you deserve it, man. <laughs> dude, I appreciate it. I'm supposed to, I want to go out there because they do uh, um Twitch. So I, I want to head out there and like maybe just do some like a couple wave type songs and shoot the shit and see the factory and whatnot. Nice, dude. That sounds awesome. So, um, what advice do you have for anybody out there that's looking to become an independent musician, or you know, or that is an independent musician currently? All right, the best advice that I can give. I mean, first and foremost, man, I mean, don't you know as cliche as it sounds, don't give up, but. Don't give up on it, man. I mean, if, I, if that's where your heart is, definitely don't stop, you know, and, and you're going to have the ups and downs because like currently, like I said, I man, I got the worst writer's block, you know, it's just kind of been one of those like moments where you're in a lull, you know, and you're just kind of like, yeah, and that's where I'm at right now. I'm still trying, you know, I'm still going to keep on pushing it, you know, um, so don't give up. It's a good question to try to like, like I'm trying to answer it in a way that I would think that it wouldn't be answered. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. do what makes you happy for sure you know just just enjoy yourself i mean that's definitely one of the the biggest things man you know you still got to have goals man definitely set goals I mean, set goals for yourself be happy man smile a little bit you know don't don't just sit there and like that tunnel vision i gotta you know everything's just like copy and paste gotta do this gotta do that to like you know just just have some fun with it man like there's no like set pace there's no you know what i'm saying like, yeah. but you got to organize yourself in a way that you got to have goals like, you can't just sit there and like not set a goal or like well i work for myself i'm not gonna do anything yeah you don't do that either you know but it's finding that balance maybe that's the word i'm looking for is just finding that balance of what you were trying to achieve and and understanding that you know it may not happen tomorrow but it's gonna happen because you want it to happen you know and just keep on keeping on, man. Pick up the guitar, pick it up, drums, pick up the bass, sing, whatever it is, you know, even if you're, you just want to mix and produce, man, just hop in the studio and, and just keep working at your craft always, man. Just keep working at it. Don't stop. Have fun. Have fun and have fun, man. That's solid advice, man. That, that, cause that reminds me of something that Victor Wooten said, you know, he's a famous bass player. Uh, you know, he, he hated practicing when he was a kid because he didn't want to practice. He just wanted to play. He just wanted to do it. And I think that's like what goes along with what you're saying. Like, don't try to have, you know, tunnel vision, have it. Everything's got to be a certain way. Just just go do it. The, the practice is doing it. You know, don't sit there and try to be so methodical with it and everything. Just do it. And you will learn along the way the rights and the wrongs and everything. And then also what you said, setting goals. Like that's super solid advice too, man. Without goals, like there is no destination. You're just going to be going this way, this way, this way. You got to have a goal. And then yeah. once that goal's met, have another goal. Like a, a, a smart thing to do would be, you know, set a vision board for yourself. You know, write, write it down in your notes in your phone, like what you want to achieve in 10 years or five years. It, it, there's that balance of trying to set a goal that's too big versus a goal that, you know, like, I want, to, I want to write an album, you know, I want to write 10 songs, you know, but maybe you just need to do a single first, you know? I mean, it's good to be aggressive. Like, you know, if you want, you know, the everything, the whole thing, man, like make that the goal for sure. But you got to set those incremental goals and in the process of having fun and in the process of playing, you, you want to set some smaller goals and stuff like that to keep you in check, man. You know, it, it could be super small, you know, maybe, maybe I want to, I want to work on, you know, the record, twice this week and, and, and that's the goal and you did it you know and it's progress man and, you know every time rob and i get together sometimes we get together and it feels like we don't accomplish anything I mean, we sat down for four or five hours and like we don't even have a take in the computer yet but like it's still progress you know because the next time it probably won't be that way you know next time we actually like you know we'll, we'll get set up and do something you know you'll, you'll get it man you'll definitely get it. if you want it you'll get it Solid advice, man. I appreciate you. Okay, so do you have any new music coming out or anything that just released or anything that you want to let anyone know about? Nothing that was just released recently. I mean, um, our last EP was The Resolve, and that was released back in July last year. Um, currently, we're working on what I'll say is new music. 
it's more than one song and it's less than eight right now. <laughs> we'll see how it goes and how we plan to release it. You know, we're still figuring out all the particulars. Yeah, we're, we're, we're actively writing. We do have two songs completed as far as like the music and all that stuff goes. Yeah, man, it's, it, it's kind of a different process this time. We're doing things a little bit differently than the last couple of EPs. We're actually doing live drums on this thing, which is sweet, um, which Anoop Sastry is actually playing on the record, which is going to be pretty awesome. Um, working with him has been like incredible, dude. He's something else. Dude, that's um, amazing that you got him to, to drum for the record. Yeah, yeah, I reached out, man, and hey, dude, he was all in, and like, yeah, <laughs> it's so sick, dude, because he's like my favorite drummer ever. Same. Second favorite drummer. Rob's my number one, and then a new number uh, two. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you got to catch yourself. <laughs> exactly, yeah. No, actually, I might as well bring clarification to all that right now. Um, So, obviously, as I stated earlier, Rob had a kid. Um, banging on the drums, setting up the mics, that kind of stuff right now isn't a thing. You know, we're not going to be able to do that as frequently as we wanted to. So reaching out to a new, he was all in. He's like, dude, that works. Have him do it. I'll try my best to learn those drums. <laughs> and uh, he's going to take the lead on mixing the master in this thing. Well, mixing, I think Donnie over Dreamcatcher is still going to master this uh, particular EP record. I don't know exactly what it is right now, but these new songs. So Rob's not going anywhere. It's just where we're at right now. It's it just something that just what it is, you know, makes sense. And he's all for it. And he's very much an integral part of this thing man he's writing right alongside me every time i go over there every sunday so yeah we're looking forward to it cool man and uh tell him i said congrats dude uh becoming a dad congrats to him man being a dad is, is something else dude it's the most oh, rewarding yeah. thing ever <laughs> but yeah man i appreciate you being on here and also um I appreciate you uh, asking me to be a part of this new EP. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Alex reached out to me about collaborating on a song for the new EP. And the one you sent me was sick, by the way. I love the whole track. I'm stoked to be able to like do something over it, dude. I, ho I hope you enjoy whatever I come up with. I'm thrilled, dude. I can't wait to hear what you come up with, man. It's going to be a Finally, work with something yeah man but yeah man uh, i appreciate you being on the podcast definitely dude keep in touch with me man um glad to be you know a part of your story here now glad to have you man and thanks for having me on here yeah for sure man no problem all right man well i'll let you get back to your day all right partner all right see you